Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the new Gemini 1.5 Pro API features because it just got released today. Also the Google AI Studio, I believe it has some upgrades such as system instructions. We're not going to go over everything, but we're going to uh, overview what's new and we're going to review function calling with Gemini 1.5 Pro, the latest model, and also how we can actually use audio files now, native audio files with the API calls. Also, we're going to learn about how we can actually implement our own exponential backoff with retries, meaning if we make a call to API and it returns an error so we can retry it. The reason for that is I'm jumping around a little bit, but currently the API is very limited, the free of charge, because pay-as-you-go is not available until May 2nd, and the pay as you, uh, free, char free of charge is limited to two requests per minute, although I was able to overcome it, maybe if you're not using as many tokens. We'll talk about all that. So uh, now... There are upgrades in uh, Google AI Studio, uh, such as system instructions, and you can use video and audio. I believe now this is generally available in, uh, they say, 180 plus countries. Now, native understanding, native audio understanding is available through API. Also, you can do function calling, which we're going to uh, look at in practical code format. They also have a new file API. I'll put a link to this blog post if you want to read more about it. So essentially, you can test it out and play around with all these features in the Google AI Studio, which we're not going to do. So the API, so you can get your API key from the AI Studio, is currently limited to two requests per minute. That's why we're going to implement exponential backoff. 32,000 tokens per minute, although I used an audio file, which they provide JFK's State of the Union speech or something like that, which is 70,000 tokens. So I actually didn't run into this limit. You do have 50 requests per day. I, ble I believe it's currently all free. But in May, uh, you're going to be able to use much more, such as 10 million tokens per minute, 1 million input tokens, 1 million output tokens. It's going to be priced as $7 and $21, respectively. Another thing is that this JSON mode, uh, I looked at this JSON mode, which would be very nice to use. But when I go there, they only have the curl example. So I'm not sure if you can set it up as a parameter to the API call uh, through the Python SDK. So that's why we're not actually going to test it, because I don't think that uh, there's a way to do it but we will be testing the audio we're going to use the jfk's audio which they provide and uh, plus the function calling uh, the code files will be i modified the function calling to do wiki downloading wikipedia articles and translate text and we'll try to experiment with this but the code files for this will be available for free at my patreon uh, publicly available so you should be able to download it there the link will be in the description the requirements is google generative ai and requests so let's start with uh, actually, my API key is being exposed, but I'll be deleting it uh, at the end of this video. Uh, but so let's start with the audio example. Uh, maybe let me zoom in. So first, we have to set the genai.configure. We import it from google.generative.ai once you install the Google Generative AI library. And you, you have to set your API key. Normally, how I do this is you have to specify your API key. For example, you can do it something like this. API key equals OS. Gemini API key or your API key. And then, you know, when I, when you see that in my code, you would just do this. Okay. And then you can say API key equals API key, for example. Uh, something like this should work. I have, you can set your environment variable to Gemini API key. Anyway, this URL is provided by Google to download the State of the Union address from 1961. When you run this part of the code and with requests, you're going to download the sample.mp3. I already have done it. So I'm going to comment this out. And then you upload your file. We have also done that. Maybe let's comment this out. So Gen AI is an upload file feature, which they talk about. I think this is a new feature. This is the new file API. So now you can just upload files. After that, we're just going to give it a prompt. Listen careful to the following audio. Provide, provide a brief summary. The important thing here is that we're going to define our model as the Gemini 1.5 Pro latest. So this is the first day you can do this. This is exciting. I also really like... I guess we're going to have to upload it again because we have to refer to it here. Maybe there's a way to actually sure download it. You can also control click on these classes and read about their methods and stuff like that if you want to find out more. Anyway, and we are going to set up makes retries. Let's actually run this and see how it works real quick. And then we'll talk about the rest. So we are sending in an audio. As you can see, we are going to, this is going to be our prompt. And then right when we make a call, we just call model.generateContent. As you can see, we've defined our model here. And we're just going to paste a list of our prompt plus our file, which is going to be actually the sample.mp3, which we're uploading to Google Cloud. So this, this takes some time. 
let's let's just wait for it i'll be right back when the response is ready okay we got our response back so it understood the audio so we don't have to call any other endpoint or anything like that this is a single model that is multimodal any care that's why they call it native audio support so it says the summary of president kennedy's 1961 state of the union see so nowhere in the prompt we provided any information so it completely just did this from the audio file here it explains it and then it says kennedy's vision was president kennedy called for unity and dedication from all americans to overcome the challenges ahead so the, here we got the summary so this is this is pretty cool it took about 15 seconds or so this is like a 15 minute uh, mp3 file and it's actually at the end it should print the total tokens 78,000 tokens worth of audio it's quite a lot see so it's 43 minutes you can listen to it if you like but uh, the way we made the call is we set a max retries to five so if we fail we're going to try five times we try delay initial delay is going to be two seconds and we initialize retry count to zero and while the retry count is less than max retries, we're going to try this. And if it is succeed, we're going to break out of this loop. We no longer need to try it. But if you receive any error, we, I'm only checking for resource exhausted error. I'm not 100% sure if this is the rate limit error, but you can actually make this apply to any kind of error. I, just, I didn't want to try for other errors. Like, for example, what if I'm hitting their content filter policy or something? I don't want to retry that. So I'm just looking for resource exhausted, hoping that this is correlates with rate limit. And then I print a message and then we sleep for that much in the original, like two seconds, we increment retry count. And then we apply here exponential back off, which means like times two, right? At first, we're going to sleep two seconds and the second try. If it fails, we're going to sleep four seconds, then eight. So we just times it two and we're going to do that for a total of five times. That's it. And the model also has count tokens parameter. It also has history. So if you go to model, you should be able to generate. If you go to generative model by control clicking in it, you should see its um, methods. There's a history method here, which allows you to look at the message history, for example. We're going to look at that in function calling. So this is how you deal with audio. Let's move on to function calling. Here we are, again, configuring our API key, just like we did before. We have two functions. So the beautiful part about this Google's implementation, I, I think they really did a great job with their Python SDK library. So it pretty much converts your functions into definitions automatically. All you have to do is define your function with, with type setting. So you have to define parameters a type. For example, in this case, download wiki article is going to take in a topic, which is going to be a string. You can put uh, doc strings in there. That's, that is being used. Uh, the only limitation is that the types are, uh, I think, limited currently to like string, integer, list, Boolean. So not all types are supported currently, but string, like the regular type should be just fine. And then our uh, second function is a translate text function, which is actually going to call, call Gemini 1.0 Pro to actually get a translation of a text, which passes into this function with the target language. So this is pretty cool. We're going to use Gemini 1.5 Pro to call a function. If it's a translate, then it's going to choose this function and going to use its uh, smaller sibling, Gemini 1.0 Pro, to do a translation task for us. Look, uh, take a look. All we have to do is we just define the tools as the names of these functions, and it actually just honestly does everything itself. Like, if I were to comment this out and print the model, uh, you'll, you'll see that it's actually doing the conversion itself. And as you can see, tools, Google, generative AI types, content type, function library. So this is all done for you automatically. That's the very nice part of Google to do that. And we've defined our model with our tools. Okay, right, we have two tools, download wiki article and translate text. And then we're going to model.startChat. Uh, we're defining a chat with enable automatic function calling through. And this uh, exponential back off is set exactly as we've done in the audio example. So we're just going to, we can pass in any message here. Chat now has a, a send message method. Okay. You can perhaps uh, click on start chat and see what it has. Control click. Anyway, we're going to send, can you download the summary of Wikipedia article, large language models, and we're going to print the response.txt. We're going to break out, right? And at the end, we can also print the chat history. So we can see. So let's run this. And we'll, we'll see that it does the function calling and everything automatically. We are not keeping track of, let's see, we have called the function, which downloaded the abstract, the summary of the Wikipedia article using this function, because it called this function. We are getting the extract, writing it to file and returning that data. And we have also printed this into terminal here. So we, we so the 
So this is the response of the model. We have the user text that can download. This is the printing of the history as, as we are doing at the end with this or contact in chat.history. Uh, as you can see, it did a function call. It called the name download wiki article with this topic, large language models. And then it's pretty cool. It actually added back to itself. So I guess it does manage its own history, from, if I understand this correctly. Maybe we'll explore this more. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is really cool. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it did actually call the function. It added the function result. And then this is the, what the model has returned to us, it's similar to Assistant with GPT. So let's try to call the translation. Okay, now let's ask for, can you please translate this text to French? Text is, hello, how are you? So it should now call this function, which then will call the Google, another Google model, Gemini 1.5 Pro. Let's run this. So these types of requests are pretty quick. It still takes a few seconds. And yeah, there we go. We get a response. Bonjour, comment ça, comment ça va, I guess. And these are, this is our history. It did call the translate text with this text and target language being French. So this, this worked really well. And the response actually came from the other Google model. And then we finally printed. So this is really lovely. We can, you can define additional functions. Let's say like def math operations. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and try to do this uh, like that, for example. So as you can see, when we define it with math operations, operation is going to be a string. Number one, number two is going to be integer. Here we have our doc string. And now all we have to do is here, uh, comma, math operations. And then now if we say, what do we have? Like, let's say, what is two uh, plus two? Let's just try that. And let's see if it calls its function. I mean, I guess it could decide to answer it itself right away, but let's see. Yeah, okay, the answer is four. It did call the function math operation with arguments number one and number two plus the operation. So this is really convenient. I hope maybe OpenAI will implement, uh, simplify this in that way. This is actually what I tried to do with my OpenAI Unified. By the way, if you enjoy my videos, you can always find more at my website, echohive.live. I have over 280 plus videos, such as this one and more, in, more depth in code reviews of my interesting projects. So OpenAI Unified API, I tried to kind of uh, do this with OpenAI. So do take a look at it. I have many projects with that. If you've been following the channel, you'd know. But this is it, okay? This is really wonderful for watching until the end. For the next few minutes, I'd like to talk and explain about my auto streamer, the newest version, uh, version 3. I will go ahead and start it. You can actually download a free demo of this app. Uh, and once you click on it, it'll take you to Google Drive. The app is launching right now. Uh, we'll give it a second. So. If you're at the AutoStreamer's website, if you want to download it, you can click on the free download and you can download it from the Google Drive. Otherwise, you can click on download full app and it'll take you to my Patreon. And once you, if you do decide to buy it and download it, you will get something like this. And all you have to do is also click on autostreamer.exe and the standalone Windows app will launch. And all you have to do is put in your API key. It'll also auto detect it from your environment variables. And then you click on generate course and just type in anything you would like to learn. For example, I can type in future of AI. Uh, you can also select code based topics if you want it, if you want to learn like coding, let's actually go ahead and do that. And I can say Python dictionary methods. You know, this can really be anything you like, you can here select how many chapters you want to create, let's go ahead and select two. click on generate course outline. So this will go ahead and generate a course outline for us, which we'll be able to review here in a moment. Okay, curriculum created successfully. Now we can go to view course outline and find our dictionary. We can do a search and review the course outline. If we like what we see, we can actually go ahead and select this. There's also a search option. And then click on generate course. But before we do that, we have already selected it. As you can see right here, course is selected. We can actually see how detailed we want it to be. Let's set this to 100. You can select the web theme. You can generate and play with the audio will stop playing right away. You have six different voice options and over 50 languages. You can also customize what appears on the web page. I'm just going to go ahead and click generate course and it will launch a website and uh, create this in real time because we selected generate and play. It will play the audio. Let's just give it a second. A dictionary. In Python, a dictionary is an unordered collection of items while other compound data types have only value as an element. As you can see, there's the play pause button. I can pause the generation process. Maybe if I was recording this or live streaming as I'm doing right now, recording a video, I can actually talk about this and then come back to it and click play again. A dictionary has a key. 
to continue. I can also stop this generation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we'll see, but if you generate your course to the fullest, then you will be able to view all your generated courses here. And you can actually launch them, like uh, all great philosophers mm -hmm. of the world, which is a course I created. And we can actually review this course. And Socratic Method and Plato's Republic. Click on, click and listen and read through them. Like I said, this header and the footer link and the text can be customized from these settings. Yeah, if you like what you see, if you want to learn more, please go to autostreamer.live. Link is in the description. There's a quick video there too and an FAQ. And if you have any questions, you can contact me at Discord or Twitter. Just uh, let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.